and the Texas tradition continues coming your way right now. The Denver Broncos and the Dallas Cowboys. And for the 34th time, the Dallas Cowboys host NFL action on Thanksgiving Day. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dallas. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours from all of us here at CBS. I'm Greg Gumbel. Along with Phil Sims, we're watching a couple of quarterbacks today. One of them, Ryan Leaf, has not been able to click and stops in San Diego and Tampa. He's hoping to make the most of his chance here in Dallas. Greg, Ryan Leaf has had troubles on and off the field in the past, but yesterday we had a chance to talk to head coach Dave Campo. He said Ryan Leaf has been a model citizen here in Dallas so far. The one problem he is having, he's been an erratic thrower. He's had receivers open and down the field he's overthrown and if you want to have success at quarterback in the National Football League you've got to be accurate throwing it on the other side of the field for the Denver Broncos if they are to make a charge between now and the end of this season toward the playoffs that man Brian Greasy is going to have to lead the way Brian Greasy is going to have to do it last week he is 11 for 31 against the Washington Redskins uh, the offensive line has struggled it is hurt he knows coming out here today on short rest he goes I'm excited I'm just going to go out react to what I see today and hope to have a good game our man who mans the sidelines is Armin Katayan. We check in with him now. Happy Thanksgiving, Armin. Same to you, Greg. You know, Mike Shanahan told us last night he's never experienced a season quite like this one, one that began with such high expectations and talk of the Super Bowl that's been reduced because of injury and other reasons to something both terribly frustrating and inconsistent. Well, on that theme, there's one consistency today, as Bill Romanowski told me just moments ago. The Broncos' season is on the line today, which is one reason that Rod Smith and his damaged ankle will play. As he told me just moments ago, very simply, I have to. Greg, both you and Phil, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Armin. Thanksgiving football is on tap here at Texas Stadium in Dallas. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Back at Texas Stadium, the 5-5 five and five Broncos, the 2-7 and seven Dallas Cowboys. We are set to get underway. The Broncos have won the toss. They have elected to receive. That is Micah Knorr to kick it away. And deep is number 84, Chris Cole. And the throwback uniforms today means the return of the Orange Crush, at least for one day. Forgot how orange it was. <laughs> it is very bright. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We are underway at Texas Stadium. Chris Cole. Three yards deep in the end zone. To the 10, 15, just across the 20. Bulls his way forward to the, about the 25 or 26 yard line. Here is quarterback Brian Greasy. 18 touchdowns on the season. That's third most in the NFL. He has also thrown 12 interceptions and comes off the lowest percentage game of his career last week. He completed just 35 and a half percent of his passes in the loss to Washington. You know, something interesting he told us uh, last night, Greg, he says, I just learned what we're doing on offense this week. I'm not so concerned with the defense. I'll just react to what I see out here today. Orlandis Gary is in the backfield and he gets the handoff, tries the left side and gets very little. Denver offensive line, they have struggled this year with injuries, and it's really hurt the Denver running game. Hollandis Gary getting the start. Mike Shanahan wants to shake things up in the running game. Tony Carter with him. Rod Smith starts at wide receiver despite a very bad ankle, which is sprained. Keith Poole, the other wide out, and Dwayne Carswell as the tight end. Gary Kubiak, the offensive coordinator, may have to be very, very innovative today. The pitch for Gary across the 30 to about the 31 yard line and a look at the Dallas front four Pepe Zellner Brandon Noble Michael Myers and Greg Ellis well you look at the Cowboy linebackers number 52 Dexter Coakley he's the guy to watch he does it all can cover receivers down the field in the secondary at the corners Dewan Hawthorne and Mario Edwards and veterans George Teague and Darren Woodson are the safeties there is Dexter Coakley back in action after having missed the first game of his career last week with a sprained knee. Greasy to throw. Pulls it down, now goes down the sideline and overthrows everyone. Edwards covering Rod Smith on the far side of the field, and that'll bring the punting unit on. Well, a couple things. The Denver offense, it will probably be a little more conservative today. Just like you said, Greg, missing Ed McCaffrey got hurt the opening game. Rod Smith not at 100%. And Mike Shanahan said, look, we're going to be more patient with the running game and not put so much pressure on our quarterback. Tom Ruin set to 
Kick it away to Reggie Swinton, number 80. High floater that Swinton takes in at his 18. And nowhere to go. Fall forward to the 21-yard line. 50-yard punt and a two-yard return. And the advent of the Dallas offense means quarterback Ryan Leaf in his fourth season out of Washington State has had two starts for the Cowboys, had a touchdown and an interception in the loss to Atlanta, and two interceptions returned for a touchdown last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, I enjoyed talking to Ryan Leaf yesterday. I thought it was pretty neat. He was really excited because this is his first national game, and all, all players out there know when they get that first shot at it, they know all their friends across the country get a chance to watch him, and he was happy about it. Movement up front. That looks like left guard Larry Allen. Our referee today is Tom White. Ball start. Number 73 offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. So Larry Allen, who has gone to six straight Pro Bowls, does not prevent him from starting the Thanksgiving Day off early. No, he wants to hit somebody quick. He knows he's trained on Thanksgiving Day to hit somebody down here. <laughs> Trying to duck outside and not getting there as Emmett Smith, Bill Romanowski, leads the four-man charge of Denver defenders. That's a loss of three. Look at the Cowboy offensive line. They've been together. They have done an excellent job the last few weeks blocking for the run. In the backfield, the future Hall of Famer Emmett Smith, along with up-and-coming Troy Hambrick, Rocket Ishmael and Joey Galloway are the wide receivers. Mike Lucky starts at tight end in place of the injured Jackie Harris. Dave Campo in his second season as the Dallas head coach was really upbeat yesterday for a man who's two and seven on the season. Leaf to throw for the first time today. Going to go deep down the sideline. Incomplete. The pass intended for number 81, Rocket Ishmael and Kanoi Kennedy was tracking him along the way. The Denver defensive front four, Pittman, Trevor Price, Chester McLaughlin, and Keith Washington. The last couple weeks, the linebackers have been very active for the Denver Broncos in the run game, and especially blitzing the quarterback. In the secondary, Delpha O'Neal, seven picks this year at one corner. Denard Walker is the other. Brown and Kennedy are the safeties. There is number 94, the former Dallas Cowboy, Leon Lett, who made a name for himself Thanksgiving Day, 1993. From the shotgun, Leaf going to go deep down this sideline. It is incomplete as number 84, Joey Galloway, bumped into Eric Brown. Incidental contact does not produce the flag. Well, Eric Brown was in better position to receive the football, and it's a good thing Galloway ran into him, stopped him from probably going up the field and making the interception. So Micah Knorr comes in to kick it away, and Delpha O'Neill, whose 13.2 average ranks him third in the National Football League in punt returns, stands at his own 37-yard line. Splits the defenders. Midfield. 45. With Walker. Near sideline. And is tripped up inside the 20. And penalty markers fly. Jamal Brooks made the tackle. And let's check the flag. Cowboy players were indicating a clip. The players will do that, won't they? <laughs> Holding during the return, number 88 from Denver. It's a first down. The attack going to the end of the play. Well, that's Desmond Clark, number 88. We'll take our first time out. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All of those true heroes and champions doing service around the world. Welcome back to Irving, Texas, everyone. The line of scrimmage is now the Dallas 38-yard line. 34-yard return to the 27 was moved back 
And so it's first down for the Denver Broncos. Mike Shanahan had made the point to us his defense and special teams had been playing very well. On the blitz, Greasy gets rid of it. Complete out here to Gary. Gary inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. And a fine job by Brian Greasy getting rid of the football under the gun. Well, it really is. A lot of people want to know, why is Brian Greasy throwing more interceptions this year? George Teague on the blitz. That's the biggest reason. Two reasons. One, he's under much more pressure. They're trying to come from behind. But maybe the biggest reason of all, Greg, they're not running the football the way they did in the past. Makes it hard to deceive the defense when you don't run the football well. That is Orlandis Gary. And Gary limping on the sideline. Mike Anderson trots onto the field to replace him in the huddle. Now, Landis Gary getting the start. Last year, he had reconstructive surgery on his knee, and, and it's been over a year, Greg. I remember talking to him a couple weeks ago. He goes, it's never been 100%. I always feel like there's just something wrong with it. Double tight end set up. Anderson gets the carry, and Anderson pulls his way inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. And so Mike Anderson who, uh, as we mentioned, has been starting since Terrell Davis went down with injury. And last night, Mike Shanahan told us he just wanted to start Orlando's Gary to try to shake things up. Change of pace, but let me tell you what. Be alert if you're a Dallas defender, because this guy's going to bring it today. And he had a look in his eye last night. We talked to him, disappointed in himself. Of course, disappointed about not starting. I know he's going to run it up in there hard. Anderson again puts his head down trying to pull his way to about the 20 yard line gets to the 21 Greg Ellis and Marcus Steele make the stop after a three yard gain in second and seven look at Orlando Gary in the sideline but Greg there's Terrell Davis standing next to him boy the running backs are a lot of talent on the sideline for the Broncos but going back to Mike Anderson I asked him what's wrong with the Denver Broncos running game last night and he only did one thing he pointed a finger to, at himself he goes, you know what? I got to make better decisions. I got to run harder. That's one of the problems with this with this run offense. Greasy out here to Rod Smith and Smith to the 15-yard line and close to a first down. He'll be about a yard short, and it'll be a third and one. Marcus Steele, the rookie linebacker out of Southern California and Denver's fourth-round pick, made the stop. They saw that graphic. Yes, the Denver Broncos. They do rely on Rod Smith. Talking to Brian Greasy last night, I said something about Rod Smith. He looked at me and laughed. He says, yeah, I know. I know I rely on him to look at him a lot, but who wouldn't if you had him out there? Third and one. The give to Anderson. Anderson, first down. To the 13-yard line. Well, that's just good running by Mike Anderson. The Cowboys actually win the battle at the line of scrimmage. Look at him. Get into the backfield. There's Woodson. Greg Gellis is up in there, but Mike Anderson breaks a little tackle and just really gets some tough couple of yards to keep the drive going. And tough is right, Phil. The, the, Den the Dallas defense ranked number seven overall in total defense. It was 19th last year. It has made strides. Zellner, George T double teamed him for a loss of one. I think you, you, Greg, you said some nice stats about the Cowboys defense. It's interesting. Usually coaches, there's Mike Simmer, the defensive coordinator. You get players that fit your system, and Dave Campbell said, hey, we're doing it different. We got our players, and we're trying to fit a system to them. They've changed the way they played on defense, and it's really made them a lot more productive and not giving up many big plays. Five wide receivers, greasy throws. That's complete. A rip. penalty marker is down. Rod Smith made the catch, and Mario Edwards all over him. Boy, Mario Edwards looked like he knew what the play was going to be. He just hits Rod Smith too early. When originally I see it, I look at it, I see the break. He's trying to go for the interception, just does not take a good angle. If he cuts in front of Rod Smith, he has a chance for the interception. Goes behind him, hits him too early. Pass interference. Number 27 defense, early contact. It's a first down. You know, the other thing I found interesting about the Cowboys defense, talking about what they do, you never hear coaches say this, and the players told us too, we rely on emotion. You know, Dave Campbell said it, hey, look, we're not that talented, 
you know, Darren Woodson said it too. We just go out there, we we hustle, we get, we're real emotional, and we hope that's good enough for us to, to have success. First and goal for the Broncos just inside the 10-yard line. Anderson tries the left side and is hit hard by Marcus Steele. Marcus Steele at 6'3", 240 pounds, the rookie out of USC. And that's about three big hits already for him today. Uh, we, we talked about this defense. Marcus Steele is really having an outstanding season, too, Greg. And they know you play defense for the Cowboys. If you want to win the game, defense better be really, really good. Because the offense is not going to score a lot of points. On second and goal, Greasy with time throws, and that's complete to Dwayne Carswell, one of his tight ends. And he is just outside the five yard line. It'll be third and goal. Let's check in with Armin Katayan. Armin. Greg, the update on the land of Scary is uh, described as a twisted left ankle. His return questionable, but just in watching it, it's a very painful high ankle sprain. So I would be surprised if he returns. Back to you. All right, Armin, thanks. High ankle sprain. That's one thing a coach doesn't want to hear. Rod Smith struggling to play with it. Kevin Casper, wide receiver, has been out for the Denver Broncos. Now another high sprain. Greasy gives to Anderson, trying the left side, and is not going to be able to turn the corner. Terrific job done on the outside by both Darren Woodson and George T. Oh, man, I just happened to look down the sideline and watch the Denver coaches, see if he should take it inside. That's what they were thinking, but you know what? When they watch the film, they're going to say we were wrong. George Teague was in there to stop him, even if he cut it back up inside. You saw questioning Gary Kubiak on the sideline. No, the runner was right. Jason Elam from 24 yards out. And the kick is good. So the Denver Broncos on the board first. 6-13 to play in the first quarter. 3-0 Denver. He's in greeting. Thanksgiving Day and Orlandis Gary is being carted off the field. He's being taken to the dressing room for x-rays and any word that we get, we will be happy to pass along to you. A look at the Denver scoring drive and Jason Elam kicks it away. Leaps a couple of good beat tacklers to the 24 yard line. And with that, we'll take another time out and then Ryan Leaf will go back to work for Dallas. As we welcome you back to Dallas, first down, Cowboys, Ryan Leaf, quick drop, throws outside, and that's complete to Joey Galloway. Ryan Leaf, boy, you, you couldn't find a more highly touted quarterback coming out of college four years ago, and as you mentioned earlier today, Phil, the things didn't work out either on or off the field in San Diego, nor did it happen for him in Tampa. Yeah, but he seems relaxed down here. A couple things he knows. But he knows he's going to be with the Cowboys next year. I think that eases his mind somewhat. This is Hambrick. And Hambrick to about the 34-yard line. And, you know, the biggest thing, Greg, is I think he's learned from his, his mistakes. Well, we'll find out if he's learned from his, his mistakes. And you also, you've got to know, you only get so many chances, too, in the National Football League. I don't care how big you are and how well you can throw it. Well, you know, here's the other thing, too. He's stepping into a situation which has been a revolving door for the Dallas Cowboys. This quarterback position, five different quarterbacks this year. There's Quincy Carter, who they hope will be back next week. Movement up front. But these quarterbacks have been in and out, and the injuries have been hit, hitting them. Here's Tom Ball White. start. Number 86 offense, five-yard penalty. That's Three. Mike Lucky to tight end. But the quarterback situation, to Quincy Carter. And then Ant And don't forget, Tony Banks was in the mix there early on as well. Well, when you're playing on a football team that's not one of the top teams in the National Football League, then you're a young quarterback, your chances of getting beat up are really high. Because indecision will just bring on more punishment. Leaf over the middle has his man at midfield, and that's Galloway. Galloway inside the 45-yard line of the Denver Broncos. Delta O'Neal ran him out of bounds. Well, Ryan Lee, he told us yesterday, he goes, 
Maybe this is my last start. I don't know. But one thing, he goes, I hope I get a chance to throw more on running downs. That means on first and second down, let me throw it down the field. And, of course, the wide receiver, he says, i got to look for and find ways to get the football to number 84 because he's really fast and good. Now, we asked Mike Shanahan, does Ryan Leaf, the thought of him, bother you? He said, hey, a year ago against us, meaning Denver, he threw three touchdown passes with San Diego. Leaf to throw again. Has time. Throws a bullet to the 30-yard line, and that's complete to Rocket Ishmael. Well, I'll just say this. That's something he brings to the table a lot of guys can't bring. And he's not the quickest-footed quarterback, but he's big, stands tall, look at him, and he just delivers the football over the defense into a small window to Rocket Ishmael. Now, Ryan Leaf has also been battling... A wrist which uh, it's termed uh, it's a subluxation that it just pops out of joint every once in a while he demonstrated it for us just oh was that horrible it's <laughs> it was pretty unbelievable <laughs> first down Dallas fakes the pitch throws to the far side Galloway and Galloway is hauled down by John Mobley but just to finish it off about Ryan Leaf Greg his right wrist his throwing wrist does like pop in and out of the joint and he demonstrated to us and I go wow and he goes it's not that big of a deal yeah I know you'll get used you know it might look funny when I do it but he goes it does not affect the way I throw and you can see they have it taped pretty tightly that keeps it from popping out during the games and he, he goes if it does pop out I just hit my thigh pad and it pops back in I said that's that big of a deal to me don't yeah. do that in front of me ever again 255 to play in the first timeout Dallas we welcome you back to Texas Stadium. Ryan Leaf was just 11 of 26 for 102 yards in the loss to the Eagles last week. Four out of four on this drive. He missed some open receivers, but remember, the Eagle defense, it's really good. They make it hard on all passes. Second and 11. Has time. Now over the middle and cut by Galloway inside the 20-yard line. Now, you know, one thing that you'll see here, Ryan Leaf, he is a, a, a quarterback that's going to stand in there. And look how he looks around the field. He's going to look to his left. Then he finally looks to the middle. And because of his size, because he is a big quarterback, he can stand in there and take the hits. And I'll tell you what I've noticed when I watch films and see him on TV. He throws a lot of interceptions just because of that, because he has that ability to stand in and take the hit. Quick pass out here to Galloway. Inside the 10. Out of bounds, close to the five-yard line. That time, Denver had the blitz coming. Galloway was one-on-one -on -one out here on the corner. I would be careful blitz of this team because, Greg, you and I were talking about it when you just sit here in person and you watch Joy Galloway and Rocket Ismail run down the field. They are faster than everybody else. The blitz, they have the perfect call on. The quick screen to Galloway to the outside. Leaf gets it away before he gets hit. The give this time is to Troy Hambrick, and Mobley is there to make the stop as we come up on a minute 45 to play here in the first quarter. I know the Denver Broncos, their defense, they were thinking, hey, let's pressure Brian Leaf. You know, he struggled at times at quarterback. Let's let's get in there and do this. But as you watch this game, and my comment was, I told you, Greg, I said, there's Ray Rose, the defensive coordinator. I said, I don't know how much I pressure this offense because these wide receivers, I don't know if you can cover them down the field one on one. Dallas fans come to their feet. Second and goal from the five. Leaf on the roll, on the roll, and throws it away as he was getting pressure from Al Wilson, the middle linebacker. It'll be third and goal. Well, we asked Mike Shanahan that very thing. With, with a guy like Ryan Leaf, who is still trying to find his way, do you just sit back and wait for him to make mistakes, or do you try to pressure him? And he said, no, we're going to have to mix it up on him. And then, again, he referred to, we sat back a year ago, and he yeah, burned us right. for three touchdowns. Yeah, it's such a, you know, you never know what's going to happen in these games. You can have a thought, but you just got to react to what you see and make your judgments as the game goes along. Third and goal. Troy Hambrick 
came back and picked it out amongst four or five Broncos. Eric Brown, number 26, makes the hit from behind. Top of your screen. Play action fake comes free. And it looks like it's going to be picked up and run for a touchdown. Keith Washington, number 97, misses it. And good hustle by Hambrick. Ryan Leaf tries to shake off the effects of that hit while the Cowboys are able to salvage a field goal attempt out of this. Perhaps. Here's Tom White. Please reset the game clock for 47 seconds. Well, Greg, the one thing that we noticed. Please reset the game clock to 47 seconds. Thank you. The one thing we noticed just kind of getting ready for this game is that Ryan Leaf in the last couple games, twice in each of those games, he gets these hits that come from nowhere. And a couple times when they come from his front side, you got to say the quarterback's fault. I'm not sure whose fault that was. If he thought the Stop Eric Brown error. was going to be was picked no up. Possession on this play. Therefore, the clock should continue to run. It will start on the ready. I'm going to wait a second here to make sure Tom's done. I think we're going to get his whole family history <laughs> before this good. day is over. <laughs> Here's John Hilbert, who has been brought on while Tim Cedar recovers from a foot injury. This is from 43 yards out. And this kick is on its way. Looks good. Is good. 32 seconds to play here in the first quarter. And the Cowboys pull into a 3-3 tap. Let's look at the fumble by Ryan Leaf. There's John Mobley, one blitzer. Eric Brown's the second blitzer. Almost always, offenses cannot pick up a second blitzer. And when it's a safety, that is usually for the quarterback to look at and make the adjustment. So I would think Ryan Leaf has to see the safety when he comes up. When he blitzes, you've got to stop and throw it quick to the side that he's coming from. We're tied at 3, 32 seconds to play here in the first quarter. And Knorr set to kick it away to Chris Cole, who is in his own end zone. 25. And wrestled down at the 28-yard line. Lynn Scott, number 21, made the stop. And while we have a moment, we will remind you wear what the players and coaches wear. Shop for authentic apparel and merchandise for the holidays at NFL.com or your AOL keyword, NFL.com. I want to wear what Dion wears. Oh. I think I'd look good in the stuff he's been wearing in the pregame. Don't you think? Come on, answer. You will look like a butler. <laughs> On Dion, it looks terrific. Mike Anderson behind Greasy. Greasy to throw. Under the gun. Over the middle. Has his man tight end, Desmond Clark. Brian Greasy just stood in there. Free guy, free defense alignment coming right in his face. Still looks down the field and makes the throw. And with that, we will run out of time here in the first quarter at Texas Stadium. Each team into the red zone. Each team comes away with a field goal. Denver and Dallas tied at three. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We welcome you back to the happy crowd here at Texas Stadium as we start the second quarter. From their own 40-yard line, Greasy to throw. To the sideline, incomplete. And as Greasy picks himself off the ground, we check in with Armin Katayan. Armin. Greg, you mentioned Brian Greasy. He found himself in some controversy this week after that disappointing loss to Washington where he questioned some of the talent around him offensively, which we understand led to a meeting with Coach Shanahan on Tuesday where Mike offered the distinction between inexperience and talent, telling Brian that the younger players would not believe in themselves unless Brian believed in them. That's how Brian told us yesterday. Boy, I've been really encouraging this week. Back to you. Yes, thank you, Armin. Quick pass over the middle, and that is incomplete intended for Rod Smith. Nice accurate throw by Brian Greasy. Rod Smith, look, you never see him drop the football. In all the games we've done, I've only seen him drop maybe one pass, but high ankle sprain, just struggling to get out there. It does take away your concentration. Rod Smith has been struggling with this sprain for the last two weeks. He has started the last two games, didn't finish any of them, left those games early. 
Smith is flanked to the bottom of the screen to the near side of the field third and ten Greasy out here to Anderson Anderson 45 oh, midfield first down during one of the timeouts, Phil, you and I took a look at the charts and realized, you know, Mike Shanahan is down to one running back, and that's Mike Anderson. And he's going to use him a lot today. Nice call by the Broncos. Set up to throw this quick to Mike Anderson. They're having trouble protecting Brian Greasy. He has taken big hits. And the thing you notice on this play, one thing that comes out in my mind, just the determination by Anderson. Well, Mike Anderson told us last night what this team needs more than anything else is one of those big breakout ground games that the Broncos haven't had a chance to enjoy. Anderson again. To the 45. Yeah, you, you talk about that, Greg, and we did a game a couple weeks ago, the, uh, the Broncos against the Chargers, and you, we, we said to each other, where are the big plays in this passing game from, from this team? And if they don't run the football well, all their play action giving the quarterback more time throwing deep down the field they're just no good they don't work and of course when you have Terrell Davis in the backfield you fake to him it brings the defense up but you must run the football first to create big passing play opportunities quick pass out here to Smith and Smith inside the 40 to the 39 yard line and you know that running game all begins with that offensive line and they've had their share of injury problems there too Lenny Friedman usually the starting left guard has had a knee problem he's been replaced by Steve Herndon, the right tackle, Matt Lepsis, is playing despite assist on the cartilage of his right knee. Yeah, they got some problems. I, mean, I even said to Brian Greasy, we were talking about this last night to him, and I said, yeah, it takes you guys like 10 perfect plays to get down the score, and he goes, no, more like 12. So they can only get it in small jumps. Anderson running room up the middle to the 30. And he'll be about a yard shy of a first down, a nine-yard pickup. John Nix, the rookie out of Southern Miss, made the stop. Now this offensive line, they're doing a pretty good job so far. Good running behind it by Mike Anderson. Look how active the Cowboys line is, doing stunts up front. The Broncos still pick it up and make a hole for Anderson. And I think the offensive line, the short week, they got a little pep talk from one of their old offensive line coaches, Alex Gibb, this week. Alex Gibbs, I should say, and they come out good here at the beginning of the game. On second and one, Anderson gets nowhere, and Phil, the news just gets worse for the Denver Broncos. Word from the locker room, Olandis Gary with a fractured fibula. Well, when they carted him off the field, Greg, you know it was not good news. This is the play on which Olandis Gary suffered the fracture. Hard to tell what exactly it was there. I mean, you couldn't see the injury happen. Here's a third and two. Here comes the blitz. Greasy, quick pass, incomplete. Penalty marker is down. Matt Dominguez, the rookie out of Sam Houston State, dropped it. But now let's check the flag. The one thing you'll see when we show a replay of this is Dominguez is falling away from the football. Holding number 41 defense. It's a five-yard penalty. It's an automatic first down. Pat Dennis, the quarterback. Just watch Dominguez to the left of your screen. I don't know if we'll be able to tell right here. But as he was going, trying to turn up the field just a little too quick, falling away from the football, makes it go a little lower when you fall away from it. And of course, going to make it a much harder catch. First down at the Dallas 27-yard line, thanks to the penalty. Dominguez was a tight end, moved to wide receiver because of all the injuries. Under the gun, Greasy throws down the sideline. It is inside the five-yard line. Is that a catch? It is. Rod Smith made the grab, and Greasy again gets off the turf. Brian Greasy has taken about five big hits already in this game he's going to pump to the outside Evans number 92 is going to get the hit on him oh nice adjustment by Rod Smith and this is one of the reasons why you need him in the game uh, 
of course, a lot of receivers can do that, but the rest of the receivers don't have the experience to play around the defender and come back to the football like Rod Smith does. First and goal, Denver Broncos, Anderson, straight up left side, near the goal line, and is brought down at about the one. Michael Myers, the Cowboys, were unanimous in saying that one of their outstanding defensive performers this season has been that young man in his fourth season out of Alabama. Yeah, Mike Myers is just physically, of course, he has that talent, Greg, maybe a little undersized to play inside in this league, but he survives on just constant hustle, moving, you know, just tough to block because of the activity that he shows on defense. Double tight end in the lineup. Second and goal. Mike Anderson. Touchdown. Or did I speak too soon? It is a touchdown. No, you didn't speak. They just want to make sure he still has it when they run in there. That's why they delay in calling the touchdown, Greg. <laughs> I had no such qualms. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just trying to teach you a little something. But again, that's that's interesting. Nick, number 60, not even blocked. And Mike Anderson runs in, him, runs into him, takes him into the end zone. Jason Elam, an NFL record 333 consecutive points after touchdown. 334. So Mike Anderson, if there's going to be a ground game today, he's the man for the Denver Broncos. Denver leads it 10-3. 58 to play here in the first half. We remind you, coming up on the next L Halftime Report, Jim, Mike, Randy, and Jerry have first half analysis and a recap of today's Green Bay Detroit game and a live performance by the musical group Creed. It's all coming up on the next L Halftime Report. Reggie Swinton set to receive the kickoff. To the 15, the 20. Across the 25 to the 26 yard line. And a little teaching courtesy of Coach Alex Gibbs on the Denver sideline. Ryan Leaf, who has completed six of his last seven passing attempts. Rushing yardage uh, heavily in favor of the Denver Broncos. Troy Hamburg goes in motion. The pitch to Emmett Smith. And Emmett Smith is wrapped up. He didn't have a chance. John Mobley was in there in a hurry. Well, you know, one of the keys to blitzing and stopping an offense is timing. And at the last second, just before the football was snapped, Mobley comes up, gets in position, and you can't block him. That's why Emmett Smith loses yardage. Look at that. He just walked up. Nobody can react to that quick enough on the offense. Good, good play by John Mobley. So a loss of nine on the play, second and 19. Emmett with two carries for a minus 11 yards so far today. Lee goes down, loses the football. Bouncing free, picked up by the Broncos, John Mobley, and Mobley is inside the five. Ian Gold, number 52, they put him back or put him in the game in place of Bill Romanowski. He's got speed. He is just a playmaker. And he gets away from the block at time. Ryan Leaf just holds on to the football. Gold to the top of the screen. Just overpowers Emmett Smith. Hits Ryan Leaf from behind and causes the fumble. Oh. That is the second really tough hit that Leaf has taken in the last couple of minutes. And suddenly, opportunity knocks again for Greasy and the Broncos. First and goal from the four. Well, this is a common scene for the Cowboys. Offense makes the mistake. Defense put in a tough position. Greasy looks to the back of the end zone. Touchdown. Dwayne Carswell. On the road, on a short week. This is everything the Denver Broncos want. Turnovers by the Cowboys offense and a play they have run hundreds of time, times. Brian Greasy finds Carswell wide open in the back of the end zone. Carswell, his fourth touchdown catch of the season. Elam looks for number 335 in a row. 
the Denver Broncos score their second touchdown in a 66 second span and they now lead and there is a penalty marker on the field you were just teasing the audience Greg. The extra point is good. Unnecessary roughness. Number 76 on Dallas. After the play is over, 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Timeout. That penalty is on Flozell Adams and the enforcement and the kickoff upcoming after this. Here's Dwayne Carswell in the touchdown catch. Watch him sneak to the back of the end zone. The fake Tony Carter coming across keeps the defense up after they've already been brought up by the play action fake they do not see Dwayne Carswell sneak behind them for the touchdown Reggie Swinton in his own end zone for the kickoff Elam gets a lot of foot into this one Swinton will not return it'll be first down for the Cowboys from their own 20 you well, see the turnover problems that the Dallas Cowboys have had well Greg we talked about it already ready your team is not one of the elite teams. Your offensive line at times has struggled. You put young quarterbacks in. Not only that, they keep changing too. Indecisions, indecision by the quarterback leads to holding it longer, and it causes fumbles and interceptions. Emmitt Smith straight ahead. You saw that last graphic where the last three offensive plays prior to that play was a minus 22 yards for Dallas. There were two sacks. Two fumbles, one of which they lost. And they really done a couple good things so far today on offense. Got some receivers open down the field. Leaf, you know, stood in there, made some good throws, and it looked like they were going to be able to block the Denver Broncos up front for the passing game. But again, when you watch the Cowboys, it's almost the same game every week. Turnovers puts them in trouble. This is Michael Wiley. And Wiley twists his way just across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. A gain of about two. It'll be third and four. You know, you were right, though. We came down here, two and seven, the Dallas Cowboys are. We found them very upbeat, full of energy, enthusiasm. Dave Campo, he says, look, I know we're two and seven, but trust me, we're getting closer. He says, we're a quarterback away. Getting our quarterback ready. We're a quarterback away from being, you know, a pretty good team already. And you can see when you watch them, they do have a lot of good players on both sides of the ball. A little shovel pass that time. That was Joey Galloway. Well, they try to bring him in, make the defense think that he is going to run the football and watch his, then he's going to throw the shovel pass underneath. Defense never goes up the field to really attack Joey Galloway. And so the shovel pass is not there. You know, I know you're looking for answers to your quarterback situation, but I don't believe that's it. Delpha O'Neill standing back around his own 35-yard line for the anticipated kick. Nor booms it out of there. O'Neill. And falls on it in his own 25 yard line. That'll stop the clock with 6.42 to play until halftime. Here comes Brian Greasy in the Denver offense. Thanksgiving to you and yours from all of us here at CBS Sports. A look at the numbers on both Brian Greasy and Ryan Leaf so far today. And Greasy brings his Broncos to the line. 25 yard line, 6.42 to play here in the first half. Greasy going to throw. Out to the side, Mike Anderson. And Anderson, probably about a one-yard game after all is said and done. And, and Brian Greasy, you know, we talk about, we're talking about him taking a beating so far today, Phil. You remember what Dave Campo, the first thing he told us is his defensive youngsters are getting a little bit of an attitude. Hey, and they're showing that attitude to Brian Greasy. Even though he's 8 of 11 or now 9 of 12, he has taken a lot of big hits. And if this Cowboy team down 17 to 3, they want to get back in the game, they got to start it with their defense. And when you keep hitting the quarterback, sooner or later, he's going to throw a ball that's offline. You're going to have a chance to intercept. Anderson off right tackle. Out 
to about the 33 yard line where that win the middle linebacker makes the stop after a six yard gain and it'll be third and two. There's no question the Broncos more determined on the offensive line determined to run this football and Greg we've had some laughs we talked about Alex Gibbs uh, now it's Rick Dennison the offensive line coach but Alex Gibbs is brought down here today to, to keep the inspiration going for these offensive linemen and look at him. He is coaching there. He coaches wide receivers during the timeouts how to block defensive backs down the field to help the running game. Five wide on third and two coming deep. It is incomplete. Pass intended for the tight end, Wayne Carswell, way down the field. And Dexter Coakley was right along with him. He was right next to him. Dexter Coakley. What did we say yesterday we were talking to him he says the thing I enjoy most is running down the field covering tight ends or wide receivers and this time it's a tight end. Dexter Coke good job turns around at the right time to look back the same time Desmond Clark did. So the Powell Cowboys come up with a stop here Tom Ruin. Low kick. Swinton takes it the other way. It is buried at his own 32 or 33 yard line. Chris Cole, one of the men down there to hit him early on. Tomorrow night is Fun for All Friday on CBS, beginning with the network premiere of the Rugrats movie, including never before seen footage, followed by a major concert event featuring In Sync with special guest Tim McGraw. Tomorrow night on CBS, Fun for All Friday. All right, so hey, much fun. It's going to be a spectacular night. But you look at Denver, what are they doing today? Running the football, playing defense pretty well, and special teams. You said it, Greg. Mike Shanahan said, my special teams and defense have both been playing well of late. Brian Leaf trying to get something started on offense to give to Emmett Smith. Picks his way across the 35 out to the 38-yard line. Now, Emmett Smith expressed a little frustration. He said, you know, when you don't get much done or when you fall behind early, you're a running back, and what do you find yourself doing? Standing on the sideline because we have to throw the ball to catch up. Well, that's right, and that's, that's hey, that's the way it is on a team that's not doing well, Greg. And, and you know, quarterbacks get that same situation, too. Offensive linemen. It makes it harder for them to protect the, the quarterback when the other team knows you're going to throw it. Just five rushing yards total so far today. Emmett gets the ball again and is close to a first down at about the 42-yard line. But Chester this, McLaughlin, the tackle. I'm sorry. Excuse me. This is good for this Cowboy offense. You know, they were losing, you know, faith in themselves. You could see it the last series they had. This. So to come out and just run the football a couple times, get back in that rhythm and now when maybe when you try a play action pass you'll be able to protect the quarterback and get it off well there you see dave campo and he really felt that his guys had a chance to win this game because he says denver comes off a must-win game to another must-win game it's a short week they're fighting injuries and they have to travel but they're up two touchdowns emmett smith yeah but he forgot to mention one really really important thing you know that Denver has an experienced quarterback that can play well under a lot of situations and he's got a quarterback over uh, on his side is still trying to figure a lot of things out. Boy it was interesting you saw Emmett Smith and you know we've seen that over the years with Emmett his he, he's patient in the backfield till his line develops the blocking in front of him and what did he say yesterday patience to the hole and then speed through the hole. Sounds like a good remedy to get some good runs. Short man is Hambrick and Hambrick running for a first down inside the 45 to about the 43 yard line of the Denver Broncos. This is the young man that the Dallas Cowboys think is their running back of the future. Well, you heard a lot of good things about him, Greg, when you hang around the Dallas Cowboys in the fullback position. So few teams in the National Football League even give the, foot, the football to the fullback. And I'm sure Denver hasn't seen many fullbacks run the football. So when you give it to them, it is a surprise to the defense. It catches them off guard. And Hambrick, excellent once he gets it into his hands, gets big yardage. Leaf to throw all kinds of time over the middle to the 40 yard line hits Johnny Huggins out of the backfield Huggins a first year man out of Alabama State so what happens you get some good runs going we saw a few good runs by the Cowboys and Ryan Leaf had all the time and finally finds Huggins out open for a short game 
There's Troy Hamburg again. You know, he comes into this game averaging 5.5 yards a carry. I don't know what he looks like on TV, but he's 255 pounds when he can run. Yes, quick feet, good feet. That one goes nowhere, and that's Emmett Smith, and wrapped up by Trevor Price. And with that, we get the two-minute warning here in Irving, Texas. 17 to 3, Broncos. We don't want you to forget, as if you could, the next Tell Halftime report coming up. Jim, Mike, Randy, and Jerry. First half analysis, a recap of today's Green Bay Detroit game and a live musical performance by the group Creed, all coming up on the next Tell Halftime report. What were we talking about during the timeout? You know, I'm looking down, I just go, I swear, I played against the Broncos in these uniforms. I don't remember them being this bright. <laughs> they are like fluorescent orange, and you can see a few of the players, they even have shoes to match. Ooh. Michael Wiley is into the game. As Leaf operates from the shotgun. Quick pass, tip incomplete. Off the fingertips of an intended receiver, Darren Shiverini. But what the Broncos are really doing and making it tough for the Cowboy offense, they're, they're timing their blitzes real well, and you don't know when they're coming. They, they play safe four or five plays, and all of a sudden, the right situation comes up. They come after the quarterback, and they make Ryan Lee throw off target. That's Delpha O'Neal back at his own 10-yard line. Floating kick bounces and it's on a bounce into the end zone for the touchback. So Nor did a good job of bouncing it at the 10 yard line. It's just that his cover guys couldn't corral it and it goes into the end zone. That was definitely an acid turf bounce. When it goes 20 yards in the air, you know you're on acid turf. But Greg, when the game's over, I'm gonna give you a vote today. We're gonna give us an all iron player, the guy that we think that makes a difference in the game. That there's the trophy. It's pretty. Uh -huh. It's big. It's heavy. And lest any of our viewers forget the origins of this trophy. Yes, the my, origin is. is my that my you, partner, Phil Sims, on game day, irons his shirt. No, everything. In his hotel room. My jacket, my pants, do it all. I'm versatile. <laughs> I did it today. Greasy, play fake, over the middle, has his man. That's complete to Desmond Clark. And Desmond Clark out to about the 48-yard line. The clock continues to move as we come up on a minute and a half to play, and now a timeout is called. A timeout on the field, 1.36 to play in the first half. Welcome back. First down, Denver, their own 48-yard line. Quick drop, quick pass, and that is intercepted. Intercepted by Duan Hawthorne. Hawthorne to the 40, out of bounds. That's what the Cowboys needed. They had to make the, or let their defense make a play to get them back in the game. And what do you do to do that? You blitz the quarterback. You make him throw the football faster than he's used to. Here comes two blitzers. T. The safety linebacker comes. The throw is just off target. Rod Smith cannot come down with it. And that's a nice catch by Hawthorne. Ball was thrown just a little behind Rod Smith. And Dave Campo says, well, that's maybe a start. Second interception of the season for Hawthorne. Leaf and the Cowboys now at the 36. Has time, throws it out here to Smith. Smith inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. And stopping the clock with a timeout now. The Cowboys use their second timeout of the first half. We're down to a minute 17 to play. We'll be right back. Friday, you want to get up as early as we are because you don't want to miss the early bird sailing. Brian Greasy's numbers as he contemplates that last pass, which was just behind Rod Smith. And you got to think, Rod Smith, Greg, you know, it's just, hey, look, it was not an easy catch. But again, just the fact that he's been dealing with a high ankle sprain, it, it has to affect what he's doing out there. Leaf pulls it down, goes down. Keith 
Washington, his third sack of the season, in on the Dallas quarterback. And Leaf looks like he burns the third and final Cowboy timeout right here. Well, you know, I know it's really exasperating to the coaches. You could see, see Dave Campbell so upset. Nothing Ryan Leaf can do. Nowhere to throw the football. And protection just breaks down too fast. Washington does a good job. Beats Solomon Page on the right side and gets the sack. That's the third Denver sack of the day. A loss of six. And the Cowboys are now looking at third and 13. And when you've gone five straight games of allowing three or more sacks, your line isn't doing a very good job of protecting no matter who's quarterback. That's right. It's hey, look, I'm telling you, you look at quarterbacks, ones that throw a lot of interceptions. They're the quarterbacks that are behind and getting hit a lot. But what you would want for the Cowboys to do in a situation like this, they're on the 39 yard line. You just look to get four or five yards at least. So it. The worst thing that can happen to you in this situation, you want to get a field goal attempt out of it. Cowboys trying to capitalize on the Hawthorne interception. They need the 26-yard line for a first down. Lee with time, now over the middle, bat it down. Leon Lett got a hand on it. Tough situation again. I got a great view up here. Much better than he has. Nobody open down the field. He tries to buy time. Does a good job of shuffling. Then at the last second, he sees Lucky coming across the field. The tight end knocked down by a defensive lineman. So once again, O'Neal back at his own 10-yard line. And again, Moore will try to nail this one inside the 10. And now a timeout is called for by Denver. So they take their second time out. And while we have a moment, we'll remind you, Sunday, the NFL on CBS dishes up a holiday doubleheader. Oh, look at the games on tap. Phil Cordell Stewart and Jerome Bettis leading the Steelers against the Titans. The Dolphins try to bounce back against the Bills. Phil Armin and I will see the AFC West leading Raiders take on the defending NFC champion New York Giants. We ask you to check your local listings, beginning with the NFL Today. That's coming up Sunday on CBS. Brian Greasy, Gary Kubiak. Both of these teams, Gary Kubiak on the other side, it's Wade Wilson. Quarterback coaches, ex-NFL quarterbacks. What an advantage for these quarterbacks to have them as coaches. Sky high from Norm, but this one is going to reach the end zone. Well, when you look at this game so far, Greg, it's really what Mike Shanahan said to us last night. And, you know, we've done a lot of Denver games since he's been head coach, but I've never heard him phrase his team the way he did. Well, defense, special teams, run the football. Usually it's, well, we'll show him about 5,000 formations. We're going to get this guy open. It's all about his passing game, usually, and running the football. But, hey, they're having trouble protecting Brian Greasy. Uh, the team has not been playing well, so you go back to the things that give you the best chance to win. And Brian Greasy takes a knee and will run some time off the clock. You figure he'll do that once more before the first half comes to an end. As that's Joey Galloway and Rocket Ishmael on each side of Ryan Leaf as they try to discuss what can best be done in the second half. Hey, they can come back. They've shown that they can get people open down the field. The Cowboy defense has been solid. They can pressure Denver's offense, especially the passing game, and they can still get more turnovers. Another knee for Brian Greasy, and that will do it for the first half as the teams head off to the locker room. Some boos coming down from the fans. They wanted and expected more from the Dallas offense. Wasn't forthcoming here in the first half. They managed just the field goal while the Broncos put 17 on the board. And let's check in with Armin Kutain. Coach, with us such a young team, what kind of advice do you give them at halftime to help them in the second half? Well, we're very fortunate to be right where we are, the way we're playing. Uh, we're not getting anything done offensively. We got to get something going. We got to make some plays. and. Uh, we just got to hang in and play like we, you know, just with a little more intensity in the second half. All right, Coach, thank you. Greg? All right, Armin, our halftime.
halftime score. Denver 17 and Dallas 3. Coming up, we'll send you off to Jim Nance for the next Tell Halftime Report. Jim, Mike, Randy, and Jerry will have first half analysis, a recap of today's Green Bay Detroit game, the live performance by the musical group Creed. It all comes your way after these messages from your local station. Welcome back to Irving, Texas, on the heels of a terrific halftime show. Greg Gumbel along with Phil Sims. And uh, as we get back to the business of football, it's a 17 to 3 Denver lead at halftime. And we basically saw a Dallas Cowboy team that really didn't have much chance to convert its opportunities. No touchdowns with three possessions in the Denver part of the field. And the numbers on their running game, Phil, on the season, Dallas averaging 4.6 yards a carry, just 1.7 today. Yeah, that's been the struggle, Greg. And, you know, let's look at it from Denver's side. They're going to say, well, if the Cowboys want to get back into this, let's continue to stop the running game. Let's make the passing game. Ryan Leaf, make them protect him, make him throw it down the field. I think that'll be the hardest thing for the Cowboys to do to get back into it. Let's take a look at the numbers at halftime. 17 to 3 is your score and look at the difference in total yards just 76 total yards for the Dallas Cowboys and just 19 rushing yards on the day that won't get it done. Teams are back on the field and the Cowboys will get first crack at the football here in the second half. Reggie Swinton is deep for the kick along with Michael Wiley and this one is going to bounce and get picked up by Swinton at the 5. 15, 20. And out to the 25-yard line. Let's go down to Armin. Greg, in talking to Coach Shanahan, it's clear that he's going for the knockout punch right here, out, right off the bat in the second half. He said, we want to stop the Cowboys in the first series, force them to punt. We want to get the ball back, and we want to score. We want to put this game out of reach right now. Back to you. All right, Armin, you can't blame Mike Shanahan, too. He's looking for something for his team to build on, not just for today, but for the rest of the season. But And also, he said, Greg, we talked about they know they need the game, but their schedule, what they have left the rest of the season, is so tough, they could not afford to slip up against the Cowboys when they still got teams like the Raiders, the Dolphins. Uh, so playing those would be awful tough to win them all. Leaf to throw on first down. Lost the football. Picks it up and going to go deep. Has a man open. And it's underthrown and now bounces incomplete. Delta O'Neill had it and lost it. Joey Galloway came back for the contact. Well, Ryan Leaf does a good job. Tries to get away from the pass rush. He keeps both hands on the football. Watch him shuffle to his left. He does not keep both hands on the football. And that's what causes... Or let's Trevor Price knock it out of his hand. And O'Neill and Galloway combined. O'Neill was that close to his eighth interception. And that happens. Throws like that. When it was in the air, you see two Denver Broncos going for it. They knock each other off of it. Give to him and Smith. Left side running room to the 32. And smack down there. Kanoi Kennedy and Eric Brown coming up from the safety. And Emmett rolls over and is slow to get up. Yeah, that was a pretty tough hit. We talked to. That yeah, looks like his legs bothering him too, Greg. Emmett Smith suffered a sprained MCL of the right knee against Arizona on the 28th of October. He missed two games, came back last week against Philadelphia. Kanoi Kennedy, number 28. Eric Brown, number 26. Six, both come in. One low, one high. And oh. Emmett still being tended to on the ground. Denard Walker, number 27, gets in there and gets ahead. We mentioned it at the very top of the day. No question he is going to be in the Football Hall of Fame one day. Emmett Smith being helped off the turf. We'll take a timeout and come right back. The smiling Emmett Smith on the sideline appears to be okay. We're told that he's expected to return. Eight carries and just eight yards. Here's the Dallas Cowboys. 0 for 5 on third down today. This is a third and three. Leap, throw, and that is incomplete. Close to being picked off by Jimmy Spencer. Nice play by Jimmy Spencer. Really a nice. Ryan Leap has the football on target. Darren Chevarini is the read. Seaver he's throwing to. Spencer reads the quarterback, comes underneath, just doesn't make the catch. So O'Neill back at his own 20 yard line. Mike Amor 
gets it away, wobbling, and bounces at the 30. And the Cowboys bat it back. So Brian Greasy goes back to work on offense. Emmett Smith hoping for another shot on offense. 17-3, Broncos. <laughs> There's some awful big dogs in the street. <laughs> First down, Brian Greasy. Avoids the sack, throws complete on the near side to Rod Smith. 14 yards and a first down. Well, Brian Greasy was fortunate just to have somebody else to throw the football to. They run the play action fake, and Tony Carter is so wide open down the middle, but pressure on Brian Greasy stops him from throwing it. Look at this play action fake, gets him, nobody around him. Greg, he is so wide open that maybe even you could have hit it. Leave us not get carried away. First down, Greasy pulls it down, now throws, complete this side, 81 is Keith Poole, and Poole is in almost immediately by Mario Edwards, and now you see Greasy trying to establish something of a rhythm, and, and Phil, he said it, and, and it probably is his evolution as a leader on this team when he said he's making a concerted effort to encourage our guys, and it goes back to what Armin was talking about at the top of the day. Yeah, you know, Brian Greasy's always got to remember, next to Mike Shanahan, he's the most powerful guy in the Denver Broncos. And the way he acts and what he says carries a lot with the, with the players around him. But Greg, he does so many good things. Mike Shanahan just kind of working with him. Nice one. Just working with him and, and helping him develop as a quarterback. Remember, Brian Greasy, young, only his fourth year. And uh, again, Mike Shanahan says he's as tough as can be. And we've seen that again today with the tough hits. Smart. He gets rid of the football under pressure as a quick release. And... Just a continuing process of how to act, conduct yourself in front of your teammates. So you you got to do it all. On that last reception, Keith Poole came to the sideline holding his side, and Kevin Casper, number 82, the rookie out of Iowa, is into the lineup. First down from the 47, Anderson, big hole up the middle, inside the 40 to the 35-yard line. That's another first down for the Broncos. Cowboys know they're down. They need to make some plays on defense. They can feel the game is entirely slipping away from them. So they're actually gambling a little more here in the second half. Crowd the line of scrimmage, trying to stop the run, but once you break that first line of scrimmage now, there's nobody behind it. That's why they're picking up big yards once it gets past two or three yards. You saw Mike Anderson's numbers, 14 carries for 46 yards on the day, including the touchdown. Anderson again, and penalty marker is down. This is gonna be a hold on the Denver Broncos, and that'll slow this charge, at least momentarily. Holding number 62 offense to 10 yard penalty remains first down. Just the second Denver penalty on the day. The hold is on Dan Neal. And incidentally, the National Football League and its Referees Association recently made a joint $375,000 donation to the World Trade Center Memorial Fund of the New York, New Jersey Port Authority. That fund provides financial assistance to the World Trade Center victims and their families. Greasy, play fake. Has time, now throws, and that's complete. What a bullet inside the 35-yard line to Rod Smith. Well, I, I got to show you this again. I don't like to show this angle all the time, Greg, but Tony Carter, watch him again, goes down the middle of the field. Play action fake. Everybody looking for run. Excuse me. And when the play was over, he just looked at everybody in the sideline, raised his arms up and goes, what do I got to do to get this football thrown to me? Line of scrimmage, the 32-yard line, second and seven. Greasy in trouble, and down he goes. Courtesy of Izell Reese. Another blitz by the Dallas Cowboys, Izell Reese. A backup defensive back comes on the blitz. No way the quarterback can see it when he has the play action fake away from it. Cowboys got to take chances and reward at that time. About a week.
go. You and I were talking about the kind of trust that a quarterback has to have in his team to turn his back on that line and go with play fake and then turn back around and hope there's no one to the other jersey there. Yeah, no, you, in those situations, Greg, you got to trust the coach that he's designed to play that, they, that will fool the defense. It did not that time. Third and long. Greasy with time, throws over the middle. Smith. And Smith inside the 35. Loose football. It's whistled down. It will be short of a first down, and Jason Elam will come onto the field to attempt the field goal. What that does, though, it gets the Broncos in field goal range. Rod Smith going all the way across the formation. Dexter Coakley. Got a completed pass. And Darren Woodson making the hit to cause Rod Woodson to lose it. Watch if he's down. He is down. Phil, you have to marvel, even at half speed, what Rod Smith does for this Denver Broncos offense on the field. Jason Elam from 50 yards out. On the way. It's going to be long enough, and it's going to be right down the middle. Jason Elam, his second 50-yarder of the season. 20-3, to Denver. 9.02 to play here in the third quarter. Elam to kick. Reggie Swinton, number 80 deep. Swinton will return this one from the six. 20. 30. Outside, lost the football. Loose ball at about the 32 or 33 yard line, and the Broncos have recovered. The Cowboys have a chance to make another big play for them. And what happens? Fumble, turnover. Detron Smith causes the fumble, knocks it out. No, I'm sorry, Detron Smith recovered it there, number 42. And once again, Dave Campos' young defense put to the test here. Broncos with the ball at the Dallas 33-yard line. Second Dallas turnover, and the third time today that Denver begins in Cowboy territory. Well, you're really challenged now if you're a defensive player for the Cowboys. You're doing a pretty good job, and you get nothing to show for it. Anderson, maybe a yard on the right side. Marcus Steele was there. It'll be second and nine. You know, we, Greg, you showed the graphic. Looking at the halftime stats, you look at the score and you think, oh, the Denver must really be moving the ball and having an outstanding game on offense. 136 yards is all they had in the first half. Oh, well, it's Gibbs. A little adrenaline going on the well, sideline. You know, every run, if it doesn't get 20 yards, he's going to be upset. Casper is in motion. The pitch for Anderson. Cuts it back inside the 30 and fights his way to about the 38 or 37 yard line. Greg Ellis and Demetric Evans putting up the battle for the Cowboys. Boy, nice tough run by Mike Anderson. And what what you got to like for what the Denver Broncos are also doing today? Uh, being a little more conservative, being more patient with the running games. They're getting rewarded with it too. They're getting some good yards, but also when it's third down, they're makeable. They're not making Brian Greasy hold the football too long to throw it to get those first downs. Third and five. You see what the Broncos need for a first down. Greasy gonna throw for it. Down the sideline, looking for Smith. Almost made the catch inside the 10-yard line. Mario Edwards is defended. Rod Smith, who today has gone over the 1,000-yard mark receiving for the fifth straight year, almost came up with a terrific grab here that would have really put the Cowboys in a bind. Yeah, nice job. Mario Edwards, he saw the football, but it's so much harder for the defensive back to react and come back to it. Rod Smith goes underneath, just can't make no the catch. No leaping, guys, no from 46 yards away. Had plenty of foot in the 50-yarder. Has plenty of foot in this one, and it's straight, too. Jason Elam putting points on the board like clockwork now. It's a 23 to 3 Denver lead. 7-13 to play in the third. 
Welcome back to Texas Stadium, 23 to three, and the Dallas Cowboys in the last two games have been badly outscored. And almost, almost all of it has come from turnovers. Swinton from the five. 25, just shy of the 30 yard line. While we have a moment, we remind you, you can preview all of Sunday's games with analysis and insight from Jim Kelly, Bernie Kosar, Phil Sims, and many current players. Log on all week, NFL.com, or your AOL keyword, NFL.com. You know, Greg, you talk about it and say all those points are given up and outscored and all that turnovers. But, you know, a lot of times, everybody talks, well, we can't have turnovers. But sometimes it, you have turnovers because the other team's just better than you. They got better players. That's what causes turnovers most of the time. You know, the fumbles are not just silly fumbles. You get hit when you're not expecting it. The other guy's bigger and faster. You're going to let go of the football. Emmett Smith back into the game. He is the deep man in the high formation. Takes the handoff and he's hit hard at about the line of scrimmage. Al Wilson and Kanoy Kennedy. A gain of a yard, second and nine. Emmett Smith. Boy, what a resume. Four NFL rushing titles, three Super Bowl championships, NFL MVP in 93, a Super Bowl MVP of Super Bowl 28, 10 consecutive years of 1,000 yards rushing, oh, and nine Pro Bowls. Emmett goes to the sideline. Michael Wiley is in, gets the handoff, and can't get outside. Is dragged down by Kavika Pittman. More lost yardage. Let's go down Armin. Greg, you mentioned Emmett Smith just a few moments ago before that latest turnover on the kickoff. Emmett kind of walked up to me. I'm standing here. He goes, shakes his head. He goes, what am I going to do? What should I do? And I said, Emmett, you've got a lot more experience in this kind of stuff than I do. So we kind of laughed about it. But, you know, it gets back to that little controversy this week between him and Dave Campo about the direction of this football team. Back to you. Yeah, Dave Campo is saying that they're in the process of evaluating quarterbacks, and Emmett kind of said, I'm not here to be in the middle of an evaluation. I'm here to play football and win games. Over the middle, that pass is almost intercepted by Spencer. Intended for number 81, Rocket Ishmael. Well, yeah, Emmett Smith, Greg, just to finish that point. Getting, the, you know, getting some criticism in the papers. We're just talking about that, the evaluation period. But he's been here for so many good years that now, he, you know, you just got to be the good soldier. You got to be a statesman for your football team. You know it's just not going to be, you know, the ideal situation for you. You got to help this young team get better. You know, keep a good atmosphere around the Cowboy complex. And that will just enable you to have a better chance to win. And Emmett says, you know, when you've been one of the guys here, as he has been, people tend to look for you, look to you for the answer. Yeah, and that's why you got to be careful what you say. Here's O'Neal from the 30. Side steps a tackle. Outruns a couple others and trips and falls at the 30-yard line. 5.35 to play in the third quarter. 23 to 3, Broncos. You know, when you got your barrel, everything is right in the world. <laughs> barrel man is here from Denver. He is one deep breath from busting that barrel. From the 31 yard line, Greasy and the Broncos. Anderson. Out to about the 33. We remind you that Anderson is the only running back left. Holandis Gary fractured a leg bone in the first quarter. And I'm thinking about the Cowboy defense. We talked to some of the players uh, yesterday. Dexter Coakley, we were talking to him, and he goes, wow, this Denver offensive line, maybe it's not doing as well as it did last year, but they like to get out and cut block you, cut block you, and he goes, it's so tough to deal with. Not many teams do it as well as Denver. Greasy throws far side, and that's complete to the tight end, Carswell. And Carswell fights for a couple of yards out to the 30 seven yard line yeah and Coakley's on the tackle but Coakley says there's the only thing you can do when they're coming at you you've got to get your hands on the offensive lineman's helmet there's Coakley number 52 in the passing game well you got to avoid those wide receivers too he is a tremendous athlete able to play every part of the game on defense can blitz stop the run cover receivers and with speed can make plays all over the field 
on third and four. Greasy. Quick screen. Far side. Complete. First down for Rod Smith. Boy, that takes a lot of pressure off of a quarterback and offensive lineman when it's third and five and you run screens to the outside receiver. Nice block by the receiver in the slot. Rod Smith has run this play many times. Knows, knows what he has to get. Gets up inside for a first down. Smith, seven catches for 81 yards today. And you see his numbers on the season over 1,000 again for the fifth straight year. And Rod Smith, it's worth repeating, was in doubt right up until game time. Well, it was he, literally a game time decision. Yeah, I'm sorry, Greg. If he can just make it through the game without re-injuring it, which the last two weeks, Greg, you, you've said that he had to come out because it started bothering him again, gets 10 days off before the next game. He has a chance to get healthy and get rid of this high ankle sprain. Second and six as Denver threatens to move into Dallas territory, and they do. Mike Anderson across midfield to the 48-yard line. You know, we were mentioning talking to Dexter Copley, and, and Dexter was so looking forward to this game, as he does every Thanksgiving, because he says this is just a showcase. Family and friends are in town, and you want to go out and put on a good show for a national audience. Yeah, he said he was so excited about playing. It's like a, he says, the only time we get any atmosphere like this, he says, during the playoffs. And uh, for the Cowboys, they're not going to get in the playoffs this year. You look at that, the Cowboy defense. The offense turns it over. That's one of the big reasons why they're out on the field so much. It's hard not to break down late in the game when you're out there that much. On a third and three, Anderson is not going to get there. He's a couple of yards shy of a first down. It'll be fourth and two, and the punting unit will come onto the field. So the Broncos trying to take some time off the clock as they move on. Don't you love that helmet? Yeah, the old Bronco helmets were that they didn't shine that nice. So they, you know, even though they're retro, they've got some different wax on them or something. I, I noticed everything. Ruin sky high kick. Swinton gonna let it bounce into and through the end zone for a touchback. Hey, here's our NFL.com interactive poll for today. Which team has the most to be thankful for this year? Just log on, cast your vote at NFL.com. Hmm. I usually don't vote, but I would vote for Butch Davis, what he's done with the Browns. Well, let's 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 revisit why you don't vote. Well, I mean, I usually don't talk about the the. But you don't vote either. Me. Yes, Greg. Yes. Let's tell America one more time. I am not a computer whiz. Yes. Is, you, you don't even know how to turn it on. You, you know, you know I, I come into these games each week, and you tell me nothing that I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know what's on that computer that I is such a big rush to get to. Brian Lee running out of time and goes down at the 14-yard line. Number 99, Monty Rager. The third-year defensive lineman out of Texas Tech. Well, you know, the Broncos, they got, they get to Ryan Leaf. Nobody opened down the field, but Leon Lett, Kavika Pittman, ex-Dallas Cowboys, they're getting in on some action today, and the crowd now is turning against the team and Ryan Leaf in particular because when in doubt, blame the quarterback. Second and 16. Leaf has time the middle complete that won't get very much Emmett Smith pulled it in and John Mobley reeled him in and you know the headline tomorrow is going to read Phil that Ryan Leaf couldn't get it done but it's been much more than Ryan oh Leaf tonight. absolutely it's uh, Greg I tell you what he actually is he's just playing okay it's not bad uh, you know he called he fumbled twice uh, got hit from behind but what did Eric Brown the safety for the Broncos tell us last night I asked him about the Cowboy offense and he goes hey it's really simple easy to figure out so it's hard for this offense to get big plays because they don't trick or deceive the defense enough from the shotgun Lee stepping up throws and just plain missed his intended receiver Darren Shiverini and I think Ryan Leaf can shoulder that one himself he had his receiver wide open coming across the middle and just missed him 
trying to go deep down the field was Lee looking way down then at the last second comes off the receiver goes underneath the Chevarini and you're right Greg he was wide open in Mississippi and I got a feeling Dave Campo might change quarterbacks Delta O'Neill is at the 35 high snap Nor comes down and gets it away from the 30 a big hit as he comes up the sideline and O'Neill is finally corralled inside the 45 yard line 52 yard kick 28 yard return special teams again the Broncos special teams have played very well today created opportunities like this field position Broncos just not resembling the team that they were last week against the Washington Redskins. Well, as we talked to them yesterday, Phil, you know, we, we kept returning to the theme of whatever happened to the running game, which is just day in and day out a staple of the Denver Broncos offense. Well, you know what, Greg? It wasn't doing as well. Maybe the coaches were not given enough chance, enough chances to really show what it can do. Play face. Over the middle. Complete inside the 25-yard line. Rod Smith, no, incomplete now. People always say to me, why don't they pull the quarterback when the team is up? And I always have the answer, look, this is not college football. They don't really substitute a lot in the National Football League. Mario, Mario Edwards gets the hit, but I would really seriously consider taking Rod Smith out. Why subject, subject him to another hit, to lose him? You've made it through the game. You're most likely going to win. Don't let Rod Smith get hurt and set him back. And Mike Shanahan about to have a word with him on the sideline. Final seconds of the third quarter. Anderson inside the 40-yard line. And time will run down here in the third quarter. We've got the Iron Man trophy still to figure out who's going to get it here today. End of the third quarter, 23-3. We're back after this message and a word from your local station. This is the NFL on CBS. Back for the start of the fourth quarter. Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan, and the rest of our ace CBS sports crew. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours from all of us. Mike Shanahan and the Broncos in charge, 23-3. And there is Clint Sterner warming up on the sideline. And... Well, I had a feeling, I don't know if he's coming in for sure, but I did see Dave Campo turn around and say his name, and that's why I mentioned it on the air. Third and seven for Greasy and the Broncos. Straight drop over the middle, has his man Dominguez. Dominguez inside the 30 for a first down. Boy, I just saw why Matt Dominguez was a tight end before they pushed him out to wide receiver. He was originally a wide receiver. They said, bulk up, put some weight on and be a tight end. But watch once he catches the football, delivers the blow. Hawthorne cannot bring him down until he pushes forward for about five more yards. You know, Phil, we talk about this short week. Is it easier or is it tougher when you don't have time to game plan as much as you normally would over the course of a week? Well, I said that to Mike Shanahan. He says, we did a whole game plan like we would, we would do if we had a week to get ready. Mike Anderson. 22 and I was surprised to hear that he goes nope we gave it all to him everything as many plays as we put in every single week and that is the one thing the Broncos do they put a tremendous amount of pressure on their players to relearn formations and all these new plays every single week and you know when you when you watch them play you know they don't make a lot of mental mistakes they all seem to know where they're going and what they're going to try to do to execute the play Tell you say he spent a couple of days last week prior to their last game getting ready for this getting game, ready yes. for this game instead of taking Friday and Saturday afternoons off he started working on the thing on second and five inside the 20 to the 17 Anderson again and Michael Myers with the stop and the motivation for the coaches just like the players when they know they have this Thanksgiving Day game is boy if you can just win it you get three days off and you can just relax physically of course but mentally knowing you won the game feel good about what you've just done and in the case of both these teams get healthy well rest is always a good thing in the National Football League first down 
Denver threatening again. Anderson to the 12. And now that Denver ground game just grabbing yards and chunks. Yeah, but I, I want to go back to these uniforms one more time. They, they look pretty good, the shiny helmets, but here's what I like. They got them coordinated. Look at those shoes some of the Bronco players have on. And you said earlier, well, this will be the only game they can wear these things. Well, that's right. Orange jersey, orange shoes. Yeah, but here's the worst thing that happened. What? You said, I want a pair. Yeah. <laughs> That's George Teague, the ninth year safety out of Alabama. Boy, he has been around the league three years with Green Bay, one with Dallas, one with Miami, and now his fourth season back with the Cowboys. Well, he takes a shot to his thigh, Greg, and that's the reason he is down. Number 31 he gets hit by his own player. Dat Wynn runs into him, and one of the reasons this Cowboy defense has held together so far this year, even though they're out on the field all the time, is the safeties. Darren Woodson and George Teague, they're experienced, they're both good, and they've kind of held, you know, held a young defense together and, and kept the morale up. Yeah, Darren Woodson sitting there talking to us yesterday, says it's been a different kind of a, uh, a season, and last week took a lot out of it, a yeah. lot out of the team. Yeah, I think it did, just because, you know why? Because last week was just like this game. They did some good things on defense, but every time they look up, they're down three touchdowns because the offense has turned it over for them. And there's Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator. You know, just a just mentally and emotionally a very tough thing for this defense. And uh, I do commend them because I've got a chance to see enough of their games this year. They keep hanging in there under circumstances when there is no chance of winning. Well, Darren Woodson was quick to mention that man, Dave Campo. He says we give coach or I give coach a lot of credit for getting us to go out there and fly around and hit people and, and, and hustle on defense. Well, also, and Dave Campbell knows what he's got here too, Greg. He knows that they're just building, trying to get a few things in place for the future so they can get the quarterback situation solidified and then get better on offense and try to win some games. Izell Reese has come on to replace Teague. to give us to Anderson, and Anderson to the 10-yard line, about three yards shy of a first down. Pepe Zellner with the stop. It'll be third and three. And George Teague back onto the field. You know, I got to go back to Alex Gibbs, Gibbs one more time and just say this. You know he's not a full-time coach because when he was a full-time coach, he had a headset on, and he was much farther out on the field. He would walk out to the numbers sometimes to yell at his offensive lineman, but now Rick Dennison is coaching the offensive line and doing a good job today. Third and three, Anderson, and Anderson just inside the 10-yard line. That'll bring the field goal unit on. Dexter Coakley, Darren Woodson with the stop. That's got to be a lot of relief for Mike Shanahan to come in here after last week and losing and knowing and I can't imagine what it's like to, to be the head coach and have all these plans and thoughts about your team and they kind of fall to the wayside. And you know if you lose a game today that everything you did during the offseason and preseason, it's over. Well, you're not going to the playoffs. He deemed his as Elam lines up for a 28-yard field goal, and it is good. Mike Shanahan deemed his offensive performance against Washington last week the worst he'd ever seen. This is a little better, 26-3. 11-13 to play here in the fourth quarter. Dallas has failed to score a touchdown in its last nine-plus quarters. Elon kicks Swinton from the 12. Does a little ballet step and up to the 29-yard line. We remind you, coming your way on the Subway Post Game Show, Jim Nansen Company have a recap of all the NFL's Thanksgiving Day action. And Phil Sims will present his All-Iron Award to the MVP of today's game. That's coming up on the Subway Post Game Show. And the booze accompany Ryan Leaf back onto the field. 25 rushing yards. And, you know, that statistic right there will contribute greatly to Ryan Leaf's inability to get things done. Today. Yeah, good analogy, Greg. And it's not, you know, the Cowboys have been somewhat patient with the running game. They've tried to stick it up in there. 
felt like they've been out here throwing it every single down. He's going to throw it outside and completes Joey Galloway out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Dallas's last first down came with 325 to play in the first half. Well, it seems like that <laughs> Denver's offense has been on the field. Well, they have been most of the second half. And if they haven't been three and outs, they've been turnovers. And either way, it's been killing the Cowboys on offense. Second and four. Hambrick and Huggins in the backfield. Quick pass this side, complete to Ishmael inside the 40. And the rocket is out of bounds, and there is the first first down in a long time for the Cowboys. Well, you know, it's important for Ryan Lee, you know, to talk about him. It's important for him just to hang in there, keep grinding it out, do what he's supposed to do, because the coaches, and we, you talked about it, Greg, Dave Campbell, and the staff, they're evaluating the quarterbacks. This is tremendous experience for him here with the Cowboys system, if not to play the rest of this year, just to get him ready to have an offseason and get ready to compete next year for the starting quarterback job. Lee stepping up, throws out to the side, Hambrick, and Hambrick eludes one tackler, midfield, 45-yard line, inside the 40, still on his feet and down to the 33-yard line. Well, you can see Hambrick. We talked about that he's a tremendous runner with the football out of the backfield, but shows nice hands, makes a good catch from Lee. The ball's thrown just a little high, gets it with both hands, and count the number of times he breaks tackles. There's two good ones. Now let me run over somebody. Got my shoes off. I'm still counting. To the 33-yard line, first down. Lee, trip. Picks himself up, goes for the end zone, and is incomplete, intended for Galloway, and Jimmy Spencer made a fine play on the football because that pass was on the money. Boy, Galloway, the speed still, even though Jimmy Spencer, once these defensive backs, once they turn around and look for the football, it, of course, it's going to make you slow down, and that was almost enough to let Joey Galloway get by him. That one got through and hit Galloway right in the chest. Second and ten. This side has his man, Ishmael, out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. That's another first down for the Cowboys. Nice throw by Ryan Leaf, showing really good touch and anticipation throws to the outside the placement's perfect the touch is perfect over the outstretched arms of the defender we talked we talked phil about how he came out of school a much ballyhooed quarterback signed a big bonus was supposed to be the savior for the san diego chargers he was not how is he mechanically well today i think he's much better than what i saw in the, especially in last week's game greg against the philadelphia eagles much better with his feet, getting in position. That's one of the reasons why he's more accurate throwing the ball. Over the middle, incomplete. Spencer covering Reggie Swinton. And we've got a Bronco down at the 21-yard line. Number 91 is Chester McLaughlin. four-time Pro Bowler, 6'4", 334 pounds. And he's going to take a breather here. You know, we hear a lot about Chester McLaughlin. Took some criticism when he played for the Kansas City Chiefs, but Mike Shanahan has nothing but good things to say about him. Says he's come here conducted himself well plays hard from start to finish in the games and you know that was a criticism of him in the past but it's not been true here for the Denver Broncos second and ten Leaf getting rid of the corner of the end zone it is caught incomplete out of bounds Rocket Ishmael made the catch and couldn't get the feet down send him in motion Ismael Denard Walker is on the coverage. 
Not even close. Again, Ryan Lee, good throw under pressure. People all around him. Shouldn't say it's not even close. What am I looking at? One foot in. Couldn't get the second foot down. And on third down here, the Cowboys call timeout. Stop the clock with 8.21 to play. Broncos trying to keep the Cowboys from getting into the end zone. 8.21 on the clock here at Texas Stadium, and the Cowboys 0 for 8 on third down, 3 for 20 in their last two games. Wiley and Hambrick in the backfield. Leaf on third and 10. Throw that is incomplete at the goal line, and there's a penalty marker. Joey Galloway with Denard Walker on it. That pass appeared to be a little behind his intended receiver. Galloway goes in motion up the field. Blitz by the Broncos. Pass and interference. Number 27 defense. It occurred in the end zone. They ruled the ball we placed on the one yard line. First and goal. And that would be called the arm bar. When you stick your arm out in front of the wide receiver, that's an easy call for the officials. Ended up kind of being the butt bar. <laughs> First and goal from the one. And the Cowboys looking to score their first touchdown in a long time. Hamburg gets it into the end zone for the touchdown. Number 94 was in there as a blocker out of the backfield. Oh, and a good job by two by Michael Myers. Good contact. Drove the defender back in the end zone. The Cowboys get their first rushing touchdown by a running back since December 17th of 2000. The extra point is good. 26-10, Denver leads. back to Texas Stadium Thanksgiving Day and football in Dallas for the 34th straight year Chris Cole is deep but the Broncos are looking for the possibility of an onside kick they don't get it Cole from the two and isn't going to get further than the 17 yard line we'll remind you coming up Cowboy offensive line haven't gotten it done today the way they had hoped. And Brian Greasy has rebounded from a less than acceptable performance by his and his coaches' standards a week ago in the loss to Washington. Play fake. Greasy throws. It is incomplete, intended on the near sideline for Rod Smith. Well, I was surprised to see the Broncos even throw the football, but Pat Dennis, number 41, played the route perfectly and got both arms underneath the football, just couldn't make the catch. And I think you said it a little while ago. I imagine, Phil, you're surprised to see Rod Smith was still in the game, although he's on the sideline now. Yeah, they took him out. Well, you know what? They figured they knew the route. He was going to be near the sideline. There would be no punishment put to him. So put him in for one play. Greasy throws far side, incomplete. And it'll be third and ten. And Rod Smith stays on the sideline. And Matt Dominguez comes in. You know, without Rod Smith starting, we were facing the prospect of some very unfamiliar names at the wide receiver position for the Broncos today and Keith Poole and Kevin Casper and Matt Dominguez and Greasy 
with time. Penalty marker down far side of the field. It is almost intercepted by Brandon Noble. There's a marker down on the far side of the field. And it'll be a procedure call, an illegal motion call against the Broncos, which the Cowboys will refuse. formation there's only six men on the line of scrimmage the two wide men were not either one of them was up on the line of scrimmage penalty is declined fourth down so the explanation from Tom White and punt formation now as Tom Ruin comes in the defenders right up the middle of the field 40 30 20 Reggie Swinton for the touchdown there is a marker down at the goal line a marker at the goal line and a cowboy down in the end zone one on Denver. The touchdown is good. The crown to be enforced on the kickoff. Right at, oh, I'm sorry, Greg. The face mask call is on Mobley right at the end of the play. Just right up the middle. Once he got past the first level of the coverage team, just outran everybody to the end zone. Phil, barely 10 minutes ago, you and I were talking in a timeout about how a couple of Reggie Swinton's teammates were teasing him that if he could just beat the kicker on some kick returns, he'd be all pro because he'd been tackled four times in the last two weeks by kickers. Mobley, number 51. And that's on Pepe Zellner, who is down in the end zone. And he got blocked, Mobley did, and pulled him down by the face mask with him. Reggie Swinton's 65-yard punt return, and you know, if Pepe Zellner is seriously injured, John Mobley is going to feel very, very bad about a ridiculously useless penalty on a play that was over and done with. Pepe Zellner, number 93. Mobley grabs him by the face mask, pulls him down. And it looked like the angle there, well, he has rolled over, which is good news, and he's on his back now. The Cowboys score two touchdowns in 43 seconds. But they are still tending to Pepe Zellner, the well, third-year defensive end out of Fort Valley State. I was going to say, Greg, the Broncos are wishing they would have ran the football three times, taking some time off the clock. And I think you and I will sit here and say, we know the game is never over. Because a couple of weeks ago, we had the Chicago Bears against the Cleveland Browns, who made a almost a miracle comeback. And the Bears proved it. Pepe Zellner to the applause of the crowd and has some unkind things to say in the direction of the Denver Broncos bench, understandably enough. So there's 729 to play and you mentioned it Phil you were surprised the Broncos were throwing the football and they didn't take much time off the clock the last time they had possession now the crowd is is booing in which they should if the Cowboys would go for two here, it would only put them eight down. That would be one score and a two-point conversion. 
Michigan State. Instead, they take the one. Now they're nine points down and it's two possessions. Back flip to heaven. Reggie Swinton, 65 yard touchdown on the punt return. Everything she means to you, and everything she ever will, the three stone necklace for your past, present, and future. A diamond is forever. 7.29 to play, Dave Campo. It may not come to that, but should it come down to whether or not he should have gone for one or two, I think no matter whether you come close or not, you go for the two anyway, Phil. I would like to hear the explanation, Greg. You're down 10 points, two points makes it eight. Now you're down nine, no matter how you hit it. It's two possessions to get nine points. And with the ball moved up because of the penalty to Mobley, Micah Knorr kicks it out of sight. The word on Pepe Zellner is a strained neck, but is expected to return. And here comes Greasy and the Broncos, and you can bet they'll try to take some time off with the ground game. Well, when, when the opportunity, uh, yeah, Greg, I think that the big thing is now they got to do whatever it takes to get that first down. So play action passes are absolutely part of your offense in a situation like this. Denver with 84 rushing yards on the day, and Anderson just adds to that total, that win with the stop. Pickup of seven, and it's second and three. Now, that was a good job by Brian Greasy. You look at Mike Anderson's statistics, he went up quick snap count before Dallas even had a chance to really get ready to send extra guys to the uh, up to the line of scrimmage. He gets a good productive run out of Mike Anderson. Casper in motion across the field on second and three. Anderson, first down yardage and more out across the 35 to the 36-yard line, and here's Armin. Greg, I think it's important to note on this day of thanks where we have our forces fighting for freedom around the world that Mike Anderson in the 1990s was a Marine for four years, part of the peacekeeping force in both Somalia and Kenya, and he said, you know, under a different set of circumstances, I could have been in Afghanistan part of that war effort and he said those forces are never far from my heart he, because he said once you're a marine you're always a marine and part of that I'd like to cast my ballot in his his favor for the all iron award back to you all right Armin thanks meanwhile down on the field looks like that might be Marcus Steele or that win when it looks like Marcus Steele it is it is number 55 We'll see if we can see what happens. Number 55. Marcus Steele, he's already down. Couldn't tell from that replay. Let's go back to what Armin was saying. But, but when we give this trophy, does Armin get a vote? Something new this year? Yeah. No. <laughs> of course he does. He's got the best view of all of us. He's down on the field watching the, what's going on. But yeah, you know, what Mike Anderson has done today, you know what's really impressive, Greg? We did get a chance to talk to him last night. There was a possibility he wouldn't even have seen the field today. This could have been Olandis Gary doing all the running, but Anderson called upon, very determined talked to us about it last night how he's disappointed in himself what he has done for the running game this year but today an outstanding day by him suddenly thrust into the game 28 carries 97 yards and a touchdown and Anderson bouncing oh, that was number 27 Mario Edwards who went into the pile and came bouncing out it always says a lot about your football team, too. The Denver Broncos, when you, especially something you were concerned about and want to work on, the, you, the other team now knows the Cowboys are thinking run all the way. They come out two runs, first down, and they go with Mike Anderson again. 
picks up some tough yards. Mike Anderson now with 100 yards rushing on the day. Just what the doctor ordered for the Denver offense. Anderson to the 41. That win with the stop. Still a lot of time for the Dallas Cowboys, but remember, nine points down, it's going to take two possessions. So they're just playing on and counting on. If they do get a chance to score, you go down and do that, and then it would be an onside kick if that opportunity ever comes for them. Oh. Emmett Smith, not been much uh, a very big part of this game. Brian Greasy can let the play clock wind down to almost nothing before he calls a timeout here. And he does. And the clock stops with 4.48 to play here in the fourth quarter. While we have a moment, we'll remind you that you can kick off the holiday season with great gift ideas and licensed NFL fan gear. Just click on shop at cbs.sportsline.com or your AOL keyword, CBS Sportsline. At the very top of the day, we're talking about how this was a do or die kind of day for the Denver Broncos. And you say, well, with five and six, maybe that's not so tough. But with the Denver Broncos schedule, Mike Shanahan said, yeah, with the schedule the rest of the way, and here it is, we had to win today. Yeah, at Indianapolis and at Miami, the top and the bottom, those are going to be two tough games. Seattle playing well, already beat them. Oh, yeah, and then there's the Raiders. They're pretty good, too, this year. But, you, Greg, it goes back. When a team, the Cowboys, no matter how they approach this game, it couldn't be a desperate game for them. But the Denver Broncos, when you have high expectations, you wanted to go to the playoffs, and you get put in a situation like this, most of the time you're going to respond to it. Third and four. Greasy over the middle, almost intercepted by number 41, Pat Dennis, providing good coverage again on Desmond Clark. And Pat Dennis has been pretty impressive today, Phil. Well, twice here in the last two series, we have seen Pat Dennis get himself in position to make an interception that could really turn this game around. There he is against Desmond Clark, too fast and too active for Desmond Clark to get open against Pat Dennis. Reggie Swinton deep. Last time he touched the football, he took it 65 yards on the punt return. This one will take him all the way back to the three. Lost the football. Fallen on inside the 15-yard line. It appeared to be, well, at first glance, it was the Broncos. But they missed the opportunity. It's Dallas ball. Well, I guess once you run one back for a touchdown, you're going to head. You're going to take that chance. Field it inside his five-yard line. Couldn't tell who it might have been Detron Smith that ran by him and knocked the football out. Oh, Detron Smith just won that battle underneath, or almost won that battle for the football. So the clock is moving. We're under four, no, 431 to play now. Ryan Leaf from the shotgun. Leaf with a bullet across the 20 to the 23 yard line to Darren Shiverini. Incomplete. Well, this is actually, you know, still a chance to win the game for the Cowboys. Ryan Leaf may be getting his last shot to really impress the coaches. Talk that if Quincy Carter's ready, he will be the quarterback uh, for the Dallas Cowboys next week. Quincy Carter underwent hamstring surgery the 15th of October. This is the eighth consecutive game that he is missing. Uh, we saw him working out. And he was looking pretty good yesterday in practice. Lee on the slant complete to Ishmael. Ishmael out to the 18-yard line. 
clock continues to move as we come up on four minutes to play. It's third and five. You know, when you're the quarterback in a situation like this, you just got to remember the situation in the game, and then you got four downs to pick this first down up. Leaf running out of time, throws over the middle, has his man. That's complete for a first down to Mike Lucky, his tight end. And Ryan Leaf today has been five times better in the pocket than he was last week. Just enough movement to give himself some space to, uh, to get the pass for the first down. First third down conversion of the day for the Cowboys. Leaf hit the defender in the back. Al Wilson had his back turned to the play and just happened to be in the line of fire. That's exactly that's why Ryan Leaf threw the football because he knew uh, Al Wilson's not going to turn around and look for it. What you do in these situations, try to throw it right by his helmet to go to the receiver who is open, but too accurate hits him square in the back of the helmet. But see, on a play like that, Greg, at the snap, Al Wilson, as soon as the quarterback drops back, he's taught to turn, run, and look for the deep in cut. That's what he did, and he got right in the way of the, right in the throwing lane. Second and ten. Leaf with time, bounces in the air, falls incomplete. Should have been held by Shiverini. I think the coaches will find numerous shoulders on which to lay the blame for this one. There have been some errant passes, there have been some good passes that have been dropped. Third and ten. Leaf with time over the middle, and that's incomplete, falling short of the intended receiver, Joey Galloway. And on fourth and ten, they're going to kick it away. And I understand what they're doing. They're going to kick it away, try to stop Denver in three plays, get it back. They still have two timeouts, and you just hope you can score with a few seconds left on the clock so you can onside kick, get it, and get a late field goal. That's, that's the thinking of Dave Campo in a situation like this. and made by O'Neill at the 20-yard line. I want to remind you, our friends on the college side, the Ledger go to work tomorrow. It's a holiday helping of the Home Depot SEC football when the Arkansas Razorbacks travel to Death Valley to tangle with the LSU Tigers. That's tomorrow here on CBS Sports. We'll hear Todd Blackledge go, Vern. 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 I like that. I'm going to change your name. <laughs> By all means, I am here to make you happy. <laughs> and my mom will go, Greg, and I'll go, no, that's not quite right, Mom. <laughs> yeah, she would appreciate that. Yeah. From the 20-yard line. Anderson and galloping Mike Anderson across the 30 to the 32 yard line and appears to be enough for a first down. Boy, I tell you what, the Denver Broncos did a tremendous job of just sealing off everything the run starts to the left watch him go to the left and everybody on the right side gets their block pushes it down the line of scrimmage and Mike Anderson reads it right gets the cut back and picks up a big first down rushing yardage is obscene Phil you know they released doves at halftime and a couple of them are doing flybys by the booth here First and ten. Anderson. Wow, forward. Oh. Almost to the 40-yard line. Well, Greg, let's go back to what we said. Disappointed in himself. What he had done this year. Gets an opportunity. Very determined today. And Mike Anderson is looks like a different guy running the football. I'd say he looks like a contender. That all iron. 
with an Iron Man trophy. Well, you know, everybody is still sitting around waiting. Yes. Anxiously awaiting who's going to win this. You ever wonder what bated breath was all about? Bated breath. What is bated breath? Uh, waiting for the Iron Man trophy announcement. <laughs> That's what it is. You don't think it's you don't think it's a hook in the mouth, do you? <laughs> well, this trout have bated breath. Dallas uses its second timeout to stop the clock at 207. They'll get another stoppage of play at the two-minute warning. And Ryan Leaf, and you just wonder what that young man's future is. Well, it's gonna be here with the Cowboys. He's gotten some good experience. He gets a goal, and like he said to us, I get to go into an offseason. I get to go into an offseason knowing I'm going to be back here next year. I get to prepare and get ready for a mini camp. I'll have a chance to compete for the job. And we get a timeout with 201. You know, the, just, just play. To finish up with Ryan Leaf, Craig, though, it. Uh, and, he, and the other bit important thing, he won't have to rehab any injuries uh, this offseason, providing he doesn't play anymore the rest of the year. So it will give him a chance to really settle in, and we'll get a chance to see if he's capable of being a frontline starting quarterback in the National Football League. Now, personally, I think he's got to do a few other things. I think when I look at him, saw him, he does some impressive things on the football field, but definitely has to get in better shape. He's a big kid. My gosh, we met him. He's he really is. But I, I would say he needs to lose 20 pounds. He's got to get to to be a step quicker on the football field to get away from the rush to have the time to throw it to throw it down the field. And he says he wants to be a good player. Well, uh, you know, the old adage. Well, let's see. Show us. Show me time. You know, show show me time. And um, the attitude. It is better. I've really never been around him, but meeting him yesterday, he seemed to be in good spirits. He knows what he's got to do. Now we'll see if he does it. 2.05 on the clock. Greasy going to go deep down the sideline for Casper. Incomplete inside the 35 yard line. The speedster out of Iowa almost came up with the catch. Hey, it's two minutes till trophy time. 26 17, Denver. Bated breath, Iron Man trophy, all that good stuff. Come back to Dallas. Welcome back to Dallas, Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, and it has been uh, pretty much the same thing that the Dallas Cowboys have been going through. A little bit of frustration. The Denver Broncos, however, their fans have a little reason for optimism, and with the long layoff, they have a chance to get healthy. Yeah, they do, Greg, and they're still still alive. And we saw the Baltimore Ravens last year make a run late in the season. Here's Reggie Swinton out of bounds just across the 40 yard line. But if you're looking for a team, especially a team that's used to the to the pressure of a playoff hunt, it's the Denver Broncos. But Mike Shanahan and no other coach can can really do the best he can do with some big names on the sideline. Yeah, that's right. But but I think Mike Shanahan last night, he kind of painted it pretty well to us he goes look what's happened in the playoffs the last few years hey, all you have to do is kind of get it going late in the year get in there and winning on the road in the playoffs the last couple years doesn't seem to be the the big deal the big deal that it used to be and one of the reasons why the separation between being really good in the middle of the pack is very little right now in the NFL leaf out of the shotgun over the middle Inside the 20 yard line is Rocket Ishmael. Cowboys are out of timeout. Clock continues to move a minute 35 to play. That's a 36 yard pickup. Leaf going to throw for the end zone. It is incomplete. Jimmy Spencer has the flag thrown. Jimmy Spencer never looks for the football and then gets his hands on the wide receiver. You know, the Broncos put everybody up near the line of scrimmage and they're just making it too hard for their defensive Pass backs. Number 33 defense. The ball is wasted at the one yard line. First and goal. Phil, have you noticed on Thanksgiving Day, the team that's losing doesn't want to give up as we head down toward the closing moments? 
But really, first and goal from the one. You know, I'm sorry, Craig, but that's a tough job for Jimmy Spencer and then the dude. So much area to cover and nobody to help him. The Broncos guilty of 45 penalty yards this quarter. Brandon Noble, or Mike Myers, leading the blocking for Troy Hambrick, and there's a marker down. Offsides on the Denver Broncos. Stops the clock. Minute 13 on the clock. Offsides, number 91 defense. We have to distance to the goal. It remains first down. McLaughlin, the guilty party. And now, is anyone thinking back to the Dallas decision to go for the extra point instead of two? Even if they didn't get it, they would have kept them 10 points down. The touchdown and the field goal would have tied it and put you into overtime. The Dallas Cowboys, three unanswered touchdowns in just over 10 minutes of play. Nice job for the touchdown for the Cowboys. Lead blocker goes one way. You can see enough of the defensive players ran to the right. Hambrick goes to the left of the defense and gets the touchdown. Now we go back to the previous touchdown and had the Cowboys completed the two-point conversion successfully, they would have been within a two-point conversion of tying this game. Yeah, and I think, you know, just to talk about the two-point conversions, they, in the NFL, it's around 40% uh success rate i thought amongst coaches there existed on the sideline a little yeah rule book. A, a if you're card. down a certain point a certain amount you go for one or you go for two yeah that was uh, kind of famous or every coach was carrying it for a while but i always thought it was overused greg in my opinion the time to start using that that point pad that you have that tells you when to go for two it's really in the fourth quarter when you do it too early in the game, you change the outcome too much or you change the circumstances later on. Earlier today, Detroit recovered an onside kick against the Packers. A couple of weeks ago, we saw the Bears recover an onside kick when they needed it in the last minute against Cleveland. And the Cowboys, if they do recover it, they have a minute 10 left, a lot of time to make a few plays to get into field goal position. Here we go. Popped up into the air, picked off by the Broncos, number four or number uh, 42 for Denver, Detron Smith. So Detron Smith came up with the football, and Dallas, with no more timeouts, cannot stop the clock. Not good timing by the Cowboys. The kick does not coincide with the players running down the field no cowboy is able to even get near the football before it comes down because they were about three yards behind the kicker when he when he put the ball in play so brian greasy takes a knee and the denver broncos are a minute away from going to six and five on the season and staying in the hunt in the afc west and we got one more lesson Never give up on a game. We remind you, coming up in the post-game show, we will award the All-Iron Trophy. And you know, who wouldn't want to have <laughs> that iron flying high in their trophy case? That'll do it. 
time is winding down here in the fourth quarter. The Broncos jumped off to the advantage. The Cowboys came charging back and just ran out of time. Our final score, the Broncos 26, the Dallas Cowboys 24. We'll be sending you to Jim Nance and Company in New York for the Subway postgame show, including the awarding of the All-Iron Award. That'll happen out here at Texas Stadium, and it'll happen right after these messages. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.